Hey, if you're curious about the mead and watercolor set that seems almost too good to be true, then this is the video for you. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs, vlogs and reviews. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the mead and watercolor set. I'd like to start off by giving a few disclaimers. The first one being that Meaden actually gifted me this set, so I didn't buy it myself. That being said, I'm not being paid to create this video. I was just asked to give an honest review. So this review is definitely going to be interesting because after I did my review and I you'll see that I did a lot of painting a lot of swatching a lot of color mixing just a lot of experimentation to get familiar with this set and to kind of work out some of the kinks and some of the cons that I'll discuss in a little bit after doing all that I um, decided to watch other reviews on YouTube just to get a bit of a better idea as to whether they have the same experiences or similar experiences that I have had and we have completely different conclusions <laughs> so I guess um that makes it more interesting and also hopefully makes it more helpful for you and I will highlight the pros and the cons and share my opinions and then let you decide whether this set is a good set for you or not I'll be sure to link everything down below in the description so be sure to check that out if you want to get this set. To highlight what this set consists of there's a 100% cotton watercolour paper block which is glued on all four sides and there are 10 watercolour brushes, um, 24 12 mil watercolour tubes as well as a ceramic palette. Separate from that Meaden were also kind enough to send me a watercolour metal palette that you know I love as well as a ceramic palette that has um, rectangular wells that tends to be more the kind of shape that I tend to like. Let's start off with the palette. So um, I've bought many palettes from Meaden in the past without issues. This is a ceramic palette that's included in the set and I tend to find that ceramic palettes are just really nice to mix on. Your colours are really vibrant on there, they're clear, the ceramic palette itself won't stain, they don't like move around all over the place on your table. So all in all I really enjoy mixing on ceramic palettes. All my ones thus far have been from Meaden without issue sod's law <laughs> that the um, palette that I received in this set was actually chipped and I know that it won't bother some people but I don't tend to like that kind of thing so I have got in touch with them and let them know that it's actually chipped they have asked me for evidence and proof of that so I will send them a picture and an email and I will keep you updated in the description as to what they say about this the box itself wasn't damaged and it came with styrofoam on its own so I suspect it's just something that wasn't noticed and then it was chip shipped out apart from that I think that it's actually quite nice that they have included this inside the set at the moment I think the set is around between 35 pounds and 40 pounds and I'm assuming that it is like a beginner watercolor set I don't know if that's exactly how it's intended but that's how I'm taking it and I think that it's quite good that for that price point they have essentially included everything that one would need to get started with watercolor but in a good with good quality items thus far like you know <laughs> rest of review pending but I, I like the idea that you know they start they have a ceramic palette and that they have 100% cotton watercolor paper I kind of feel that it allows a beginner to potentially start and put their best foot forward so I was happy with that just not impressed with the chipped um, palette um, but all in all I think that a ceramic palette is a wonderful addition to a studio and I think that it's great that they've included it in this watercolour set. As we continue to make our way towards the most controversial part of this review I'd just like to take a moment to ask you to consider hitting the like button and subscribing if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more like it. It is a free way that makes a very massive difference to my channel so thank you in advance. Next I wanted to touch on the brushes. So the set itself comes with 10 brushes which is a good number of brushes. In fact a lot of brushes more than <laughs> more than we probably need. It comes with two detail brushes two round brushes, two script brushes um, and essentially three flat brushes and a fan brush. Now my very first observation is that irrespective of what they have been called um, script, round and uh, detail, to me that's essentially six round brushes of which four are practically the same size and two are the same size so it's actually 
they I just got very similar strokes from them I didn't find it beneficial having so many brushes that are all so similar for me personally I tend to prefer having one small round brush one medium round brush and a big round brush and this set doesn't have any big size 12 size 14 kind of round brushes so that's kind of a bit of a shame um, I was very pleased that there are flat brushes it's something that I've started using more recently and I've really enjoyed so I'm really glad that these are actually here because I feel like they're not always included and the fan brush again is an interesting uh, addition I don't tend to use them as much but as I continue to explore using different shapes I'm happy to experiment with it. I think that if instead of the four brushes that are the same size there was like a dagger brush or some other shapes that would have made this brush set really really nice. The only other observation or thing worth noting is that there is no um, size information or brush information on the brushes themselves so once you start using them and you dispose of the pack it can be quite difficult to know which one is the detail brush, which one is the script brush, which one is the round brush and what size they are and that's something that would have been helpful because then if you wanted to buy the same brush again you would be able to exactly what brush that is just um an observation now as for how the paintbrush feels they are um quite they're firm so they're firmer than most watercolor brushes they're certainly firmer than the princeton aqua elite for example um but they are not as firm as an acrylic brush or a mixed media brush if that makes sense so they're somewhere in between a acrylic brush and a watercolor brush in terms of firmness i think they're like plastic they're certainly synthetic but i don't tend to mind using synthetic brushes so that in itself is not an issue for me manufacturing side there were no issues i just think that the only thing is for me that water control was just a little bit harder than it is it almost felt like using the um, brushes the aqua pens you know how often you get an aqua pen that has water in the body and the bristles are slightly stiffer that's what these kind of feel like even though they're not aqua pens that being said i think all in all they are okay brushes for beginners now i want to touch on paper and i think that this is probably the one thing that we all agreed on and that is that the paper was lovely you can buy this individually but you can also get it as part of this set and on the whole grand scheme of things it is on the more affordable side of 100 percent cotton watercolor papers which is why i was really excited to try it out to see whether i would love it <laughs> and honestly i was very impressed by the quality so it's cold pressed which means that it has some texture which i really liked it doesn't have too much texture slightly less than the bao hong cold press i'd say um and it's not like a distracting it's not like a you know evenly spaced machine made texture so it's just a nice organic cold press texture <laughs> it just handled watercolor very nicely it felt like I was using Bao Hong paper it felt very similar to that I used it with the paints in this set as well as my Roman Schmoll and if you want to see me use it for hours <laughs> and use it to create a number of different paintings then I will link the live stream for you where I actually used it my initial intention was to use it for uh, a warm-up because I still want to try and use 100% cotton watercolor paper where I can but then I enjoyed the process so much that I just kept painting with it and I really enjoyed the process so I think is it my favorite paper no but is it really good for the price yes and I just love 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 that it has been included as part of this set again my assumption is that this set is for beginners and I just think it is excellent that they are putting beginners in a position where they can try out good quality supplies for the bat and see how they feel about 100% cotton watercolor paper because it does behave like other 100% cotton watercolor papers and more times than not usually cellulose paper is what is more affordable and I don't think that cellulose paper as a whole is bad but I think it is good to be in a position where um, you can try out both at an early stage and see which papers you prefer see which papers give you the effects that you want and for that reason I am super happy this was the one item that I really 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 wanted from this set and I am glad that I got it and I'm glad that it has met my expectations <laughs> and now we come to what has divided opinions and that is the watercolor paints so this set comes with 24 12 mil tubes 
each tube comes with pigment information as well as information on the opacity and the light fastness. I am happy that it comes with pigment information as I feel like it is always helpful to get more information as to what is actually inside the paints. And if you want to know more about understanding pigment information and understanding why we talk about it in watercolors and in art as a whole, I have created a whole video just highlighting all the different terminologies, their importance, and whether or not this is something that you should invest time in knowing or not, because the answer won't always be yes. <laughs> but I do feel like understanding basic the basics about pigment information will help you understand what pigments are a bit cheaper um what what kind of paints you can sell art on what kind of paints may behave a little bit differently and it just gives you a little bit more information to understand sets so my first observations based on the pigment information that we have is one I'm glad that it's there but then observing it itself there were quite a few pigments that I'm just not that familiar with or that I don't tend to see used in other art supplies as much which just made me raise an eyebrow a little bit um some of them that we know and love are there like you know ultramarine pb29 is there there's uh like a lemon yellow py3 that's there um there's a uh, a lovely rose that's a pv19 that is also there so some of them that we know and love are there um some interesting choices were like py1 which i don't tend to see used um the raw umber used pbr6 and pbk11 which again is an interesting choice that was like my first observation is it a make or break no I know that it is more affordable so I guess I kind of anticipated that certain um, more affordable pigments would be included in the set but I think it's just worth knowing especially if you were after certain um, pigments some of the names for example there's a cobalt blue but actually it's not a cobalt blue it's an ultramarine mixed with I guess white. for the price point it isn't a complete shock now, they do include light fast ratings, but personally, I think that it is probably worth testing them out yourself. And I think that this is something that applies to most brands, especially the more affordable they are, <laughs> the more it's probably worth checking them yourself if this is something that is important to you. So just um, making a few test strips, putting them on a window and just seeing how they fare in the sun. So I always tend to take light fastness ratings with a pinch of salt. But for the most part, all of the ones in this set have been rated as um, three out of three light fastness um, or two out of three light fastness, according to the company. And then the other thing that is mentioned is opacity. So a lot of them are, are rated as like semi opaque, but as you will find and as I will discuss, that wasn't what I observed either. There's no information on granulation, um, but I do end up swatching everything so I can give you some insights on that. So I did a lot of painting. <laughs> I did a lot of swatching. I did a lot of colour mixing. And I will show you all that footage in a little while so that you can kind of see the colours one by one and my opinions as I was swatching them at the time. But having reflected on them and having done more paintings with them and just really understood them, I think this would be the summary that I just want to highlight to you now. And then you can watch the rest of it and have an understanding of how I feel about them. And my impression is that it almost feels like there is something else inside these paints. So I was very impressed that they are very very bright but that's not always uncommon if there are if there is something else in the paint like dyes or certain fillers like it just feels like there is something in the paints themselves and the reason that I say that is that quite a few of the paints the browns especially were quite streaky when I was painting with them they weren't laying flat as they should and the paints weren't behaving in a way that I would normally expect them to have behaved so for example the um, pbk11 which is usually like mars black did not granulate at all which is unusual because that's usually quite a granulating color and i'm not sure why the ultramarine blue didn't look like an ultramarine blue like the hue itself the color itself was lighter than i would expect and again did not granulate at all not in the slightest there was a bit of a drying shift with the colors but for the most part the colors that you saw just stayed as they were and there was like the tiniest bit to me 
of chalkiness when I was using these. So when I did the swatching initially, I swatched on cellulose paper and then the I did paintings on the 100% cotton watercolour block that was included. So these initial impressions, the swatches that I did that I'm going to show you are all on cellulose paper so that you can kind of have a look and see what um what I'm talking about. So my initial impressions are that I really loved like how bright the colours were, but there was something about the feel of the paints that didn't quite feel right. Um and then that's what led me to keep experimenting with them to just try and get a bit of a better idea as to what it was that I was kind of struggling with. So that's like my first impression that there's probably extra binder or there's dyes or there's something else, in my opinion, inside these paints that is making them behave in a way that is different to what I would expect them to behave. The browns are super streaky. The colours that should granulate don't granulate. Some of the colours are... Um, a bit chalky and they are super bright <laughs> which I think which isn't all a bad thing right like if that is what you want if you want like super like really vibrant bright colors they're almost dye like so then in that case in that instance you may enjoy these kind of paints because they are super bright um, but if you're looking for perhaps more traditional watercolors then these don't necessarily fall into that category in my opinion because of that the only other things were that some of the colors were gummy um when I was actually trying to reactivate the paint and paint with them some of them were very streaky when I would actually lay them down or would initially appear fine but then when they dry be streaky which again isn't what I would expect of watercolor and quite a few of the pigments I just wasn't really that familiar with so I can't say that they're good or bad I can just say that I have used quite a few different brands and I haven't seen these pigments used commonly so <laughs> we we make of that what we will um but swatching gives us some insights I wanted to get even further insights so I then decided to um try some color mixes to just see how do they mix together so I picked out a, what I would call a split primary um so two yellows two blues and two reds and I just tried to do different mixes the main ones that I was trying to do were the purples as well as the greens and obviously I was able to do the mixes and I will show you the mixes here but they weren't the I, I don't feel like they mixed very well I don't feel like the colors were um, very crisp I feel like a lot of the colors were a bit muddy especially when it came to the purples and again you take it with a pinch of salt because some would argue given that it's a set of 24 and that there are so many convenience colors which is good uh, you don't need to mix but if you wanted to mix I think that especially if you wanted to mix purples you wouldn't necessarily get the nicest or the cleanest of mixes. The other thing that I really wanted to test out was just seeing how the paint moves in water. So does it stay where it's put or does it move across? See, I think for the most part, where you put it is where it will stay. As I've mentioned, I did swatching. I did lots of color mixing. I did lots of paintings. And then I found that the most interesting or what I could then conclude was that the paints seemed fine when I was painting on 100% cotton watercolor paper. So when I actually used the paints on the paper that is in the set, it didn't seem as bad. They weren't as streaky, still streaky sometimes, but they weren't as streaky. The colors remained vibrant throughout, which we've already said they are super vibrant, which is why I questioned whether there was anything else inside it. Um, and it was just a nicer painting experience. And this to me speaks to the importance of paper and the weight that paper has because the experience that I had when I was painting on cellulose paper with these paints is completely different to the one that I had on 100% cotton watercolor paper but I think that speaks to the strength of the paper not to the strength of the paints so I'm a bit in two minds about this set because I think that there are definitely pros and cons and I think the only big question mark for me would be over the paints and the quality of the paints I don't think that the paints are the nicest paints that I have tried and I think that there are some student grade paints out there that are better or feel better in my opinion 
I was enticed by how bright and beautiful the colours themselves are. But when it comes to the quality of the paint, I wasn't able to layer with them. I wasn't able to mix with them nicely. And I think ultimately I just didn't like them that much. And when I was swatching, I was focused on the colours. But I knew that there was something that wasn't quite right, which is why I kept painting with them. And I think ultimately that's what it came down to. This it, I just didn't like the feel of the paints and how they behaved. So if I were to conclude it before we do the swatches and I show you everything else, it would be that it's a really good set for the price. It's currently 35 to 40 pounds on Amazon. I think that what makes it a good price is the fact that the watercolor paper that's included as well as the palette itself. So I think if you weren't that pressed to actually get the brushes and the watercolors themselves, it would be worth getting the this getting it separately so getting the paper and the palette separately I think that the brushes are acceptable a bit on the stiffer side but that for me meant that they actually work very nicely for gouache and the paints I think are just about okay and I think it is very much dependent on how you plan on using your paints and what kind of art you like to create as to whether you will enjoy these paints or not and what I mean by that is that they are the pros are that they are very bright and they are beautiful colors like the hues themselves are beautiful it comes with a very good range of colors and you get a good amount of paint in the set itself I just want to give you an even closer look at the paint so I'm going to be swatching them individually highlighting what pigments are in there I'm also going to be reading out the opacity ratings and light fastness ratings that have been given by the brand so when I'm saying it is three out of three light fastness and opaque I'm not saying that is what I am observing I am saying that that is what the brand has said it is um, that being said I have done my little swatch sheets with like doodles underneath to help you assess whether you would call them semi-opaque semi-transparent transparent or opaque I feel like a lot of the colors that they say are semi-opaque or opaque are actually semi-transparent um, just an observation before swatching I poured out the paints into half pans and put them into the palette that was gifted to me. This palette itself doesn't come as part of the set but it is also made by Meaden. And not only that, the day after I did a few extra swatches and they reactivated fine. As in they behaved the same way fresh out of the tube as they did the day after when they had dried. Okay and let's swatch out. So I'll be using the brush. It looks like a round brush to me, roughly size eight, I would say. I have printed out my swatch cards and if you want to know more about that, I will link the video for you. But essentially it's just made my life so much easier. The reason that I like doing these like little doodles is so that we can have a look at the opacity when swatching. And I think that this is helpful irrespective of whether you're swatching watercolors or gouache to just get a bit of a better understanding of what is it going to look like if I decide to paint on top of a line drawing, for example. So that's why I've done that. And I use my printer, um, which I will link down below, which I absolutely love because it um, like you're able to paint over it without the ink, <laughs> without the ink moving around and it being reactivated. So that first color is titanium white which is pw6 it is opaque i don't tend to use white very much but as it's included i figured i would swatch it out for those who do the next we have lemon yellow which is py3 it's rated as three out of three light fastness and as a semi opaque as i've mentioned i don't know about the light fastness when it comes to different companies unless they specifically say how they've tested it out so I tend to take them with a pinch of salt next we have pale yellow this is PY1 so it's a, a bit warmer quite a bit warmer actually that the lemon yellow and so far so good it's rated as semi-opaque but I think it's actually semi-transparent. Like I think you can see the doodle underneath quite clearly. Next we have Gamboge. Next we have Yellow Ochre PY42. And it's rated 3 out of 3 light fastness and as opaque. Oddly enough, again, it's not as opaque as I would imagine. I'll also be curious to see if they granulate, which... 
I haven't seen mentioned, but I will double check. Next we have orange yellow, which is PO13. Um, this orange yellow mixed with the pale yellow is what gives this gamboge color. This is actually a really nice orange. And you'll probably notice, I don't tend to use orange very much in my art, but I like, um, I guess softer, more naturally looking oranges. And I also tend to like using oranges and reds to um, mute down my green sometimes. So I use them more for their mixing capabilities than anything else. Orange yellow is rated two out of three light fastness and semi opaque. Then next we have scarlet red, which is PR21. It is rated three out of three light fastness. It is really, really nice, like a really nice, cool purple leaning red then we have vermilion which is warmer so leans a lot more towards orange and it is pr21 and po13 next we have crimson red which is pr21 again which with pr13 this is even cooler so even more purple leaning than this scarlet red Following that we have Rose, which is PV19. It is three out of three light fastness and semi-opaque and beautiful. I tend to love PV19s. They're like super bright. They don't tend to really granulate. Now we have Cerulean Blue. Now it's called Cerulean Blue, but it's actually Cerulean Blue Hue. And if you want to know more about um, watercolors, what the names mean, how to understand different pigments, I've made a whole separate video about it. It's not 100% essential, but I think it can help you in terms of, especially when like picking certain colors and understanding why different pigments and different paints are different prices. So this um, Cerulean Blue, beautiful. It is actually, it's actually got white mixed with a phthalo blue. And the cerulean blue actual pigment tends to be a cobalt pigment that is on the pricier side. So they have tried to recreate the color using less expensive pigments. I don't think they've quite got the color, but this is nice. Next we have cobalt blue, which is again a hue. So they've actually made this using PB29, which is ultramarine blue, and have mixed in a bit of white inside it as well. So next we have ultramarine blue, which is PB29. It is three out of three light fastness and rated as transparent. So, so far, this is the first transparent color we've come across. And I'll be curious to see how it behaves. So slightly lower tinting, you want to see if it will granulate. PB29 or Ultramarine's Blue tend to granulate, but so far none of the colors actually have. So we'll leave that there and see what happens. Then we have a Prussian Blue that's actually a Prussian Blue hue, which means that it's not the actual Prussian Blue pigment, but instead they've used different pigments to make this color. It has PB15, which is phthalo Blue, and PV23, which is dioxazine purple. And it's nice. It's a nice, beautiful blue. It's not quite as dark as a lot of other Prussian blues that I have had. Following that, we have pale green, which is PG7 and PY3. It's three out of three light fastness, semi-opaque, and it is essentially a phthalo green mixed in with the ye lemon yellow. I must say I'm surprised. Usually when I see like a phthalo green, they're even more like electric and I need to mute them down quite a bit by mixing in a red or an orange or a different color. Next we have sap green, which is PG7 and PY1. It is essentially, again, a phthalo green mixed in with a yellow. It is three out of three light fastness and semi this is not the color I thought it was going to be, but it was, but it's the color I hoped it would be. Does that make sense? Next we have deep green and this is PG7 with PB15. It's three out of three light fastness and semi-opaque. So it's essentially a phthalo yellow mixed with a phthalo blue. And usually this gives rise to a turquoise. Next we have phthalo green, which is just PB, PG7. It is three out of three light fastness and semi-opaque. 
And yeah, this is the electric green that I was expecting. All the colors so far have been super bright. Violet, which is PV23. This is normally dioxazine violet. Next, we have brilliant purple, which is that PV23 mixed in with white. Oh, this is stunning. I know that purples and greens and everything, you know, are convenience mixes. In theory, you can mix them yourself with primaries, but there's just something to be said about having nice, beautiful purples. The pigments are relatively inexpensive, but for reasons unknown, they don't tend to be in sets as much as I would like them to be. And now we have Burnt Sienna, which is PR101. It is three out of three light fastness and opaque. It's a little bit goopy, but it's no matter how many, no matter how much I go on top of it, I, I don't think this is opaque. But it um, casts importance even more to just testing out your own colors and doing your own swatches rather than relying on what's on the label. The next we have Raw Umber, which is PBR6 and BBK11. It is three out of three light fasteners and opaque. But again, from my test, it's not actually opaque. I can clearly see the doodle underneath. I don't tend to use raw umber as, as much as sometimes it's called like green umber as well. I tend to like prefer warmer, warmer browns. The next we have burnt umber. So burnt umber tends to be the one that I do tend to prefer. Um, this is actually made up of PBR6 and PY42. So it's a mixture rather than the normal PBR7. It's a bit goopier than the others. It's not really moving. Again, I don't really think this is opaque. You be the judge. That's why I like to leave the doodles there so that you can have a look as well. Um, and last but not least, we have PBK11, which is just called black. I'm curious to see how this will work because um, this tends to be like a good black to use if you like creating your own granulating colors. So we will see. It is three out of three light fastness and opaque. And I will agree that that is actually opaque. <laughs> and I'll just add some water here to lift some color so that we can see if there's any or a lot of granulation. What I wanna do now is lay some water down and then pick up the paint just so that we can have a look to see how it moves across the water. Spoiler alert, where you put them is where they'll stay. <laughs> but I've already said this um, in earlier on in the video. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that you have enjoyed taking a closer look at the Maiden set. It's a bit of a different review for me because typically I tend to review things that I absolutely, absolutely love. And this is kind of something that I see it has some value but it's not something that I would say I absolutely absolutely love there are definitely pros and cons and I've tried to be as honest as I can in this video so I hope that that has been really helpful for you and I'm intrigued to know whether you enjoy these kind of videos do you want to know the things that I like and dislike or would you prefer to just know the things that I love and we'll just not talk about anything else <laughs> I'm just really intrigued to know your opinion if you have this set, I really want to know your thoughts on it. Do you enjoy it? How have you found the paints? Is it that I've got a bit of a dud set or have you experienced the same things? I'm just really curious to see what is said down below in the comments. And I think that if you are unsure about the set as well, it might be helpful to take a look at the comments and see what other people's experiences have also been. But ultimately, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you have found it interesting. And I really appreciate you for watching and for listening. If you are still watching, then you are most definitely a real MVP and I really, really, really appreciate you. Let me know that you are still watching by telling me whether you use 100% cotton watercolour paper, cellulose paper or both. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.